one of the most radical, progressive, kind, thoughtful, funny, and wonderful people I've met in politics, Claire Ferris. Already heard that 
um, today when I came up, I'd just done her endurances program. He said, I was talking to a member of the Shadow Cabinet, he said, this doesn't come up on the doorstep. No one's interested in voting systems. It's politics. Okay? And I'll tell you why it's politics, and not that I swear, but I'll tell you now. But I'll tell you why it's politics. The last, no, we've talked about nothing but power the last 10 years. The voting system is at the base of what, who has power, who wields it, and how it's wielded. So the 2008 economic crash was about power, about who had the power to deregulate the financial institutions and banks that then went along and had the crash, and then who had the power to decide who was going to pay back the bailing out of that crash. And in the end, the 1% had the political power, in part through the voting system, they had the power to say that it was austerity, the public, and public services were going to pay for that. In Scotland, in 2014, they've been talking about nothing else since then, about power, about where it's based, whether it's based in Glasgow or whether it's based in London. Then, of course, 2016, and the vote on the EU referendum, take back control. That was about power as well. And, and you know, look, you can even say the levelling up debate about where resources are spent, how they're spent, who decides. That's about power as well. Power, power, power. But don't, don't just take my word for it. Let's put first post, first part of the post aside for a second. And the fact that Boris Johnson won an 80 seat majority with just 29% of the popular vote. And let's also forget that Liz Truss, who's torn up that flaky mandate with just the biggest transfer of wealth in a single budget this country has probably ever seen, she did that with a mandate of 0.3% of the voting population. My God, that's a voting statistical error. And she is now in power and wielding that power. But let's put first post and post, half the post to the side. And the fact that it's delivered, as Andy Burnham mentioned, three times as many Tory governments in the past century as it has later ones. Let's forget that we've just had a hereditary billionaire made our head of state, where those who peacefully protested against them were arrested. But no other reason, peaceful protest. That wasn't conception. It was coercive. There was no consensus there, because I didn't consent to it, and I know there were millions of people that didn't consent to it. <laughs> Let's just forget for a second that we have an unelected second chamber with 92 hereditary peers, and the only other country outside of Iran that had the clergy with the power to vote over, over uh, political matters. And the, the vast majority of people in that place now are there because of the money that they have contributed to either the Tory party and, I'm afraid to say, the Labour party, if we're being really honest. Not acceptable. And let's forget the right to peaceful process has been undermined. Let's forget the fundamental right to strike has been diminished. Let's forget that six million citizens now, some of you in this room, and myself included, could be deported at the whim of the Home Secretary at any time that they wish. That's the law, Clause 9. Clause 9 of the, whole of the, uh, of the, um, of the recent bill that went through Parliament. That's what's happened. Let's forget that ID cards have been inter introduced to suppress the votes of the poor and ethnic minorities. And let's forget that our media is owned by billionaires and that even our very limited public broadcasters now have, in effect, Political commissar, don't take my word for it, isn't it Emily Makers who made that point in Edinburgh? Forget all about that, put your, your fingers in your ears, forget about it all, rock backwards and forwards, don't forget about it. Because now isn't the time, just now isn't the time to worry about voting systems. I know you just voted for it here at conference, but really, on the doorstep, it's not a priority. No one's interested, damn it, you're going to hear from some parts of our party, despite what's happened today. Well, it's a priority for us here tonight. It's a priority for the Labour movement. That's just been proven by the vote conference. And my God, it's a, vote, it's a priority for this country, of whom more than 50% now think that the PR voting system is well and long overdue.
So there is a real fight ahead, but actually the tide has turned onto our side. So I think our message should be clear tonight. You don't fight authoritarianism with indifference and a shrug of the shoulders. You don't fight the smashing of our human rights, our right as workers, our right to choose who runs our country and our economy by telling us it's not a political priority. You fight creeping fascism and authoritarianism by embracing democracy, by championing, by making it your own issue, and by taking it forward collectively to get this. Imagine that there is a different and better way that we can run this country. That the 99% of people in this country can have a real say over their future and the future of their community. Because that's what PR is about. So when people tell you that this isn't an issue, no one's interested, you tell them that. Because it's a massive issue and it's about power and who wields it. I'm going to conclude here by saying that we live in an age of crisis. From growing inequality, both nationally and internationally, the climate crisis, energy crisis, ecological crisis. The reality is this is the new norm. And what we can see are that those people who've led us down this dark, dystopian potential path are also the same people who are trying to hold on to the power and the wealth that they have. That's what this budget was about. You can see this budget in two ways. One, it was a scorched earth, a scorched earth policy. Win-win for the government. Because if, it, if the gamble pays off, they get another term in Parliament. But if it fails, they smash the economy for the incoming Labour government. But they also cede £60 billion pounds to their friends in that 1%. And that money is power. So ultimately, we have a choice to make in this age of crisis. With the climate crisis upon us, both here and abroad, we have a choice to make, and that is, do we, as a political party, as a progressive movement, acknowledge that everything else that I've mentioned, from the climate crisis through to inequality, is a symptom? It's not the issue. The symptom is the demise of democracy, of democratic institutions, both nationally and internationally. When we understand that, we understand that if we want to fight the climate crisis, we want to tackle inequality, we want to do all those things, then it is power and democracy that we have to champion and reintroduce into the, body, into the body politic of this country and everything we fight for. Thank you very much.